It's Fizz Friday. Tarina, hello, my dear. Thank you for joining me for the first Fizz Friday of 2021. Hey, Peyton, how you doing, hon? Good to see you online. Thanks for joining. Um, as you can tell, I'm not at home. I am up at my cottage because why not, right? Got to work from home. I can work remotely. This is just a little bit more remotely than some. But thanks for joining. Uh, it's Fizz Friday, and as always, I forget one thing. So I'm just going to ramble on and let you guys stare out the window or at the back bar while I grab the one thing that I forgot because, you know, I wanted to keep it until right at the last minute. That's right. I forgot the ice. I didn't want it to melt. I mean, I could always just go outside and get some snow because Lord knows there's plenty of it out there. Uh, anyway, it's Fizz Friday. And I'm at the cottage. Now, that's going to change things up just a little bit for you. So, and I'm, I'm not going to waste any time whatsoever. I'm not using 27 and a half ice cubes today. I'm just using one really big, fat, square king cube in this nice, big, fat, stemless wine glass that one of my cousins brought up. I'm so lazy, I'm not even using lemon today. What? Well, I mean, I am and I'm not. There you go. Yes, you heard it. Just cracking the bottle. Just cracking a new bottle of Di Sirono. And I'm just getting right into it because you know what? Why not? Right? Hey, Pops. How you doing? Um, it was a bracing minus 10 this morning, but beautifully sunny like that, like the big blue sky, like blue, bluer than blue. It was, it was that's how blue it was. How blue was it? It was so blue. No, I'm just kidding. That's the kind of stuff my dad used to tell us dad jokes. Sorry, Pops. Busted. Yep. Not even soda streaming. I'm at the cottage. I'm using what I've got on hand. Some lemon Perrier. Or Perrier, if you want to be fancy. Perrier. President Scroob drank that in Spaceballs. Mel Brooks movie. Really funny. If you haven't seen it, you're a lousy millennial, and you should go watch it. And you know who I'm talking to. All right, there we go. It's that simple. I got my DiSerrano Fizz. I've got my sparkling. I've got my lemon. I've got my DiSerrano. The three keys. I just didn't, you know, squeeze a lemon and then throw it somewhere because I just didn't feel like you're making a mess today. Mm. Oh, so good and perfectly balanced. Love it. All right. So what am I talking about today? That's a very good question and I'm glad you asked. No, I'm just kidding. I do actually prepare these things. Uh, I'm actually going to make two cocktails for you today. Um, I'm just not sure what order yet. I haven't planned that far in advance. I mean, come on, that would be ludicrous if I planned that far. Ludicrous speed, go! Another Spaceballs reference. Um, that's worse than ridiculous speed, which is kind of funny because they have almost the same letters, just in a different order. It's like a palindrome. No, not a palindrome. That's when it's the same back. It's an anagram. Taco Cat is a palindrome. Exploding kittens. <clears throat> um, anyway, I get ahead of myself. Uh, I hope you all are, you know, surviving and watching CNN with our mouths agape because what the heck? That's the most interesting reality TV I've seen in a long time. Ah, so good. I'm just going to sit that aside. Oh, Dad, you make me jealous. Sipping the Basil Hayden Dark Rye. I have yet to try that, so save me some. Um, I've got some Tully up here. What? I've got some Tully Mordew. I've got my Florida Canyon 18. Don't worry, Pops, I still have yours, and I will bring it to you this week, I promise. But the other cocktail, one of the cocktails I'm going to make is, and Dad's going to love this one. I know you are, Pops. Good old-fashioned Woodford. Why? Because that's what I've got up here. Why? Because that's what I brought. Because I can. Oh, Terry, how you doing? Brother, I miss you. Wow. Thanks for hopping on. Terry uh, is a fellow brand ambassador for Di Sirono and Tia Maria, uh, the brands that I'm fortunate enough to, to represent. Terry, I hope all is well with you, good sir, uh, and, and you know, life these days and the pandemic is, is treating you well. Thanks for hopping on. I appreciate it, even though it's, you know, super late your time because Terry's, where are you right now, dude? 
and I'll wait for him to answer. So Terry does uh, Belgium and that stretch of Europe. Uh, he's an absolutely fantastic gentleman. I love, love, love working with him. And so when I say, oh, great to see you, buddy. So when I tell you the cocktail that I'm going to make next, Terry's going to get really, really excited because I have here a bit of egg white and I just pre-separated it out. It's not like liquid egg white. It's just like actual egg white. I just separated it out ahead of time, cooking show styles. Uh, and so Terry knows that when I say I've got an egg white and I've got bourbon, I think he has an idea where I'm going with this. That's right, guys. I'm going to make for you today the more oh, – so you're in Belgium right now uh, and working in – okay. So you're right, so you're in Belgium. You're based you're, – so he's in Luxembourg. Okay. Very cool. Thanks for filling us in because I know that you're all over the place. It's not a huge country, but you are a very, very busy man. And wish I got to work in territories like that. I wish I got to come visit you. That would be so cool. I've always wanted to visit Belgium. Um, so, yes, what I'm going to be making for you today is the Morgenthaler Sour. And you're thinking, what is the Morgenthaler Sour? I'm glad you asked. No. Um, the Morgenthaler Sour. So, uh, Jeffrey Morgenthaler is a New York City bartender. Uh, and he is part of a group of bartenders that have taken it upon themselves to take classic cocktails and tweak them and actually perfect them to make the best version that they can create. So way back when, when it was called just the Amaretto Sour, um, a lot of places were using bar sour, sour mix, which was either a powder or a concentrate you added water to. And it was always a really weird shade of Chernobyl green, I want to say. Um, but since then, it's elevated and bars and restaurants around the world have learned to use fresh citrus, fresh juices, juice your own, make your own simple syrups, make your own flavored syrups. And then Mr. Morgenthaler took it one step further. He's like, let's take a look at this cocktail. Let's pull it apart. And he made a bunch of different versions. And what he came up with is what I'm going to make for you guys right now. Uh, it is the perfect version of the Di Sirono Sour. So I've got my Di Sirono and I'll be adding to my shaker uh, one and a half ounces of Di Sirono. The original Amaretto going back to 1525. And the company that owns it, Il Vassarono, is actually still a family-owned business, which is really, really cool and very, very rare these days. So I've got that. Next up, yep, I'm going back to that bottle, that Woodford. So the Di Sirono Sour is typically Di Sirono, lemon juice, simple syrup, egg white. So what Mr. Morgenthaler did was he pulled it apart. He tried different versions, but he found that taking out the simple syrup and adding some bourbon made all the difference in the world and i'm not gonna lie i've done this a bunch of times and i agree with him um sorry for tilting off cam but i want to make sure i don't spill and waste perfectly good bourbon right because why would you want to do that um and then we've got our fresh lemon yes i know i didn't use it for the fizz but you know i'm just you know being economical that's the word yeah there you go all right so i've got my lemon juice I've got my egg white, I've got my bourbon in place of simple syrup, and I've got my Di Sirono. So that was his idea, was to create the perfect sour. <clears throat> and the bourbon really gives it a great backbone. You don't get a lot of that flavor uh, because you're not using very much. I'm only using three quarters of an ounce to an ounce, depending on your preference. Okay, fine. I went with an ounce. You got me. All right. I'm going to shake this up now. Because it's an egg white, we're going to double shake, right? We're going to shake, and I like to use the reverse shake. Uh, some bartenders out there like to do the dry shake first, the wet shake second. I'm left-handed, I'm backwards. <coughs> Excuse me, it's not the Rona, it's potato chips I was eating earlier. I have a bit of a crumb stuck. Um, I like to use the wet shake first and then the dry shake. Why? When you do this, what you're doing is you're actually adding air and diluting and chilling. Those are the three things that we're doing when we double shake. Doing the wet shake first allows me to emulsify that egg white, chill the cocktail down, dilute it properly to where it needs to be, and then when I shake it again without ice, then I'm going to add that air element, and that's what gives us that really nice, thick, meringue-like foam on top. All right? So I'm going to do this. You guys, grab yourselves a fizz or whatever you're sipping, like my dad's Basil Hayden's Dark Rye, or who knows? You're drinking tequila and Campari. I don't know. Whatever. Terry might just be drinking beer. So,
So I'm shaking it for about eight to 10 seconds, maybe a little bit longer because I'm not using the ideal bar setup and I really need to bring better bar tools up here for when I do this. And I promise next time I will. Um, what I'm using is a shaker that's half glass and that actually makes it take longer to chill and dilute properly. Um, whereas if you're using what most bartenders use, which is the double steel or the double tins, you're going to get a faster reaction of temperature because that tin is just going to chill down that much quicker than the glass. Um, and if you don't believe me, read a book called Liquid Intelligence. Uh, it's an absolutely fantastic book. Um, gentleman who owns a bar in Manhattan. Um, and I absolutely agree with that. There we go. So I've got my ice out. So now I'm going to shake it again. I've got that chill. I've got the dilution. Now I'm going to shake it again to add air. Uh, and you'll see when I pour the cocktail out, it's going to pour out, look really creamy. And then it's going to settle up just like a, a pint of Guinness. Oh, I could go for a pint of Guinness right now. Maybe later. Um, I've got one in the fridge. Not going to lie. Or maybe I'll save that for football because, you know, it's wild card weekend with the NFL. Right. So, you know what I'm going to be watching? Not CNN. I've had enough. All right. So I'm shaking and obviously it's a lot quieter. So I'm shaking it kind of like I'm a paint shaker at Home Depot. You want to give good heart. You don't want to be like, I'm just a shaker. You want to like put some effort into it. It's also a really good workout. And then you can skip Arden Day at the gym. I'm not going to lie. I haven't been in the gym in I don't know how many years yet. Oh, there I am. Just, you know, being me. Not that I'm getting bigger or building muscles or anything. I'm just maintaining the mass that I have. Otherwise, I would get sucked into the sun because of gravity. Anyway, I know some of you are all out there looking at me weird. So I've got my glass. Oops, it's actually plastic. All right, so here we go. So you see how creamy that is right now? Now, that's going to settle up in a couple seconds, and it's going to look like a lemon meringue pie cross-section type thing where you're going to see that beautiful golden layer of cocktail with that nice thick white foam on top, and I can already tell how gorgeous that's going to be. You also do your wet shake first, Terry. Awesome. Nice to know I'm not the only one, right? Less chance to spill. You're going to get that better chill. And then, and here's the other reason that I do the wet shake first. Uh, Terry might agree with me on this. When you do the dry shake first, you've got the air in there and then you're going to chill and dilute, but you're going to bang that air out by shaking it full of ice, right? You're going to crush a lot of that air and, and bubble. So by doing the wet shake first, you chill, you dilute, then you're shaking it again with nothing but liquid and air in that tin. So you're going to get more air and you get a bigger, there you go. It's, it's, see, it's already set up. Look at that. That's gorgeous. It looks like a half pint of IPA in a wine glass. Here's the one thing I will say about these is you don't want to sit on them too long when you're drinking them at the bar. That is liquid perfection. You don't want to sit it too long at the bar. Now, here's the PSA portion of the evening, kids. I want to advocate safe consumption of alcohol. And when I do these, whether it's, you know, Fizz Fridays or my Tia Tuesdays, things like that, yes, I sometimes make multiple cocktails. Do I always drink them all? No. Do I always drink them all that night? No. Sometimes I'll strain up the ice, I'll put it in the fridge, save it for another day. Because even though we're in lockdown, wherever you are or not, um, Still, we need to be responsible and safe considering our consumption of alcohol. Having a cocktail, great. Having two cocktails, fine. But let's be responsible adults, right? Hey, thanks for joining. Um, so for those who have missed, I've got my DiSerono Fizz. So DiSerono Lemon Sparkling Water. I'll leave that there for Monty. Uh, I've got my DiSerono Sour. I know you'd think Monty's too young to drink, but actually... He's 77, so he's really old enough to drink. I've got my Di Serono Sour here. You can see that beautiful egg white foam I've got on top. Delicious. This is like liquid perfection, like I said. Mm. But back to my point about safe and responsible consumption. Yes, I make a lot of cocktails. I don't always drink them all. Neither should you. Hey, Mr. Zabo, thanks for hopping on, buddy. Lost you at responsible. <laughs> Well, we all know that you're not responsible, or if something goes wrong, you're responsible. Somehow my dad always said that to me when I was a kid. I'm not sure why. You'll have to remind me about that pop. Oh, yeah, I probably was. I probably was guilty of something, wasn't I? Or responsible for it. 
Anywho, responsible consumption. Yes, I work with liqueurs. I work with alcohol. We need to be careful. We need to be responsible. So please, when you're having cocktails, and I hope you're having a cocktail with me. I hope you all do, because that's the whole point of this, is to be socially distant but socially present so that we can engage with each other, we can talk, we can associate, not feel quite so lonely and locked down and whatever, given wherever you are, whatever the situation is. Um, and I love that this is actually going intercontinental. Uh, blame the guy that doesn't speak. I'm not going to blame the guy that doesn't speak. Kyle, I've seen you try to read a menu, dude. Come on. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I am going to make one more cocktail and then put some of these in the fridge. But my point about social, uh, sorry, responsible consumption and not sitting on something like the DiSorno Sour or any egg white cocktail, be it a whiskey sour, a New York, a Pisco Sour, which is one of my faves. Reason you don't want to sit on it too long is the citric acid in the cocktail will actually start to ceviche the egg white. And if you let it go for about 15, 20 minutes, you'll actually start to notice uh, an eggy smell and the foam will take on a different texture and it's just not as pleasant. So start your night with an egg white cocktail and then move on to other beverages as you go being responsible. The whole point about being responsible and not sitting on this, I don't want you to sit and chug it because that can lead to things like binge drinking and that's just not responsible consumption. See how I looped all that in there? So that's what I want you to take away is enjoy your egg white cocktail, but don't take too long with it. Then move on to something else. Also, it's kind of hard to drink a lot of egg white cocktails that get really, really feeling filling and bloating and then you look like me and no no it's just not it's not pleasant it's not pretty mm. but that is just so darn tasty okay one last cocktail and then i'm gonna let you go uh this one is super super simple i don't need any real fancy tools and now that i say that i realize that i left one over here my spoon See, I always forget. It's usually only one thing, but today I seem to have forgotten two. Um, so this cocktail actually goes well back into history, long before I was born. Uh, and everybody knows it. And I'm using Di Serono. I'm going to use something else that I really, really enjoy. And you might be surprised at this. Uh, I'm actually going to make a Godfather. Right? It's that simple. What the drink's original name is has been lost to the depths of time. But that was what Marlon Brando chose to drink while he was filming The Godfather. And so it sort of got renamed that way. And it just sort of stuck. So how do you make The Godfather? You take one ounce of Disarono. It, it typically calls for actually equal parts. But I like to riff on it a little bit. I find if you use equal parts, it's a little on the sweet side. So just in my glass, I'm not using a mixing glass or shakers or anything like that. Just in the glass, I'm going with an ounce and a half of my Disarono. And now I'm going to use something really, really different. You've never seen me do this before. I'm actually using Johnny Walker Double Black. Not Johnny Walker Black, Johnny Walker Double Black. It's like, how much more black could this be? And the answer is none. None more black. And that's a Spinal Tap reference. So if you don't know Spinal Tap, you need to go watch it. Turn your volume to 11. You'll get the joke and you'll know what happens when you get there. Trust me, you will. Johnny Walker Double Black. So Johnny Walker Double Black is a blend of a number of single malt whiskeys. This differs from the black in that it has a little bit of a peaty note. Um, and yes, I'm cracking this bottle. This bottle was generously give, gifted to me uh, by Ben Lemieux, who is one of the Diageo portfolio brand ambassadors. He's an absolutely fantastic gentleman. Oh, the peat coming off that is just... It's not Lagavulin or Lafroig level intensity, but it's there. It's definitely, definitely noticeable. In fact, you know what? Just because... You just got to, you know. Oh, yeah, that's there. All right. That's for all I'm cooking dinner. Uh, when I was taught how to barbecue and dad will verify this for me. That's your meat timer. The meat is done when the glass is empty. Right? Right. Why not the green? I don't find the green as enjoyable. It's just a personal preference. There's nothing wrong with it. I just like the peatiness of the double black. So, because like I said, I like to go a little bit heavier on the whiskey side, I'm going with a full two ounces. So not equal portions, which when you look up a Godfather recipe is what you normally see. This I'm going two ounces of double black, one and a half ounces of the Serono, and I'm just going to give that a quick little stir in my glass and make all kinds of mess. It's a good thing I put down a, a, 
cutting board on the table. Otherwise, the table would be super, super sticky and just, yeah, more mess for me to clean up later. Whereas now I can just take this plastic cutting board and throw it in the sink. Bob's my uncle. Actually, Roy's my uncle. Bob's my second cousin. Anyway, here we go. It's that simple. It's the Godfather. And I know I should be garnishing, blah, 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 blah. Every cocktail gets a garnish. But, you know, dad's requesting a bar. Oh, geez, Barzini's falling. Dad, I haven't made that in like four years. I'll have to look up the right. I know I still have the recipe pop. Um, that was a riff on a Godfather using an Amaro, I believe. I'll look it up. I'll get you the recipe and I will make one next week. I promise because I know exactly where the recipe is at home. It's right where I left it because I'm a shit ass devil. Oops, pardon my language. I'll bleep that out later for YouTube viewers. Uh, the Godfather, everybody. Di Serrano, Johnny Walker, double black. And for Johnny Walker and dad, cheers. See that balance of smoke and sweet? It's perfect. And just that slight difference in ratio. Absolutely fantastic cocktail. That's one that I might just take the ice cube out of and save for later because I've got a lot going on over here. And I got that egg white cocktail. I don't want to go to waste because that would just be a travesty or a tapestry, as some people would think about it, you know. And when you get the joke, you'll get the joke. It's a tapestry. Not a, anyway, inside family dad joke. Sorry, everybody. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. Have a great weekend, everybody. I will be back on from my normal location at home in Etobicoke um, on Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, talking Tia Tuesdays. We're going to do some fun stuff with Tia Maria. What yet? I don't know, because I usually don't until earlier that morning. Um, but that's how it goes, and that's partly what's fun about this, is it's not super intense. I want this to be light and fun, and I hope... You all are having a good time. Again, if you have things you want me to talk about, if you have spirit categories or cocktails or technique or anything along those lines, please shoot me a message. I'm more than happy to cater to your whims and wishes. Um, and I will gladly uh, make a session about whatever you want to know more about. So on that note, everybody, I'm going to grab my egg white sour and say my second and final goodbye. Good night. So long. Mwah. And thanks for all the fish. Go Google the reference and have a great weekend, everybody. You could have gotten up and gotten it. With the egg one? Yeah. It sounded like you were drinking it. I was sipping at it. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I still have tequila drink here if you want them. <laughs>